looks like the car was assembled by a spider on LSD, who also had bad taste. It, it, it tested well. American Auto premieres January 4th on NBC, and watch two episodes now on Peacock. Thank you very much. Welcome to ESPN College Football. Delivered by Papa John's. What a time to be alive. Rivalries renewed here at the Bounce House. The war on I-4 for the Pack Stadium. South Florida's in town to tangle with UCF. And once again, a critical late-season American Conference clash. Knights are going bowling South Florida under a second-year head coach. Still rebuilding, but we've got two outstanding freshman quarterbacks getting set to take the field. USF won the coin toss and deferred. And the Knights here at the Bounce House set to receive. Great to have you with us. Happy Thanksgiving. Put down the credit cards. Put away the leftovers. And let's play some college football. 75 degrees, sun splashing town. Great to have you with us once again with Kelly Stopper. I am Roy. Phil Pott, Lauren Sessler joins us on the sideline in just one minute. These two teams, and after Thanksgiving, they've got a lot to be grateful for. They don't like each other. A rivalry game should be that way. A healthy dose of maybe not hatred, but dislike, I think is good for everybody. I think it is this time of year. It's what we celebrate with college football. And we'll see what the Knights can do. They've got a hobbled head coach. He's back on the fold at top of the stand on the sidelines. And uh, we look forward to seeing what Gus Malzahn can get accomplished today. And there he is, the bubble gum to boot for UCF's second first year head coach rather all right underway UCF in the black unis on first down the toss to Ryan O'Keefe makes a man miss and a big play right out of the gate give him 16 and a couple of youngsters at quarterback as we see the up tempo which obviously Gus Malzahn is known for offensively yeah Mikey Keene making his ninth start we'll see the youngster for USF the South Florida Bulls and Timmy McLean as O'Keefe makes his second catch. USF, a different defensive coordinator for this game as well. Jeff Scott parted ways with Glenn Spencer. We don't know what to expect. Maybe a little more aggression, aggression, a little more blitzing. Three-man line versus four-man line. But right now, Roy Philpott, it's anyone's guess. Now, such as college football in 2021. Keen with time, heaves it incomplete and out of bounds in the first third down of the afternoon for the home team, the Knights. And Mikey Keene took over for Dylan Gabriel after Dylan was knocked out of that bizarre play at the end of the Louisville game. And Mikey Keene has been on a good trajectory. Done a very nice job in the rush game at the quarterback position came into play against UConn last week. Third down and three, O'Keefe in motion. And they'll look to the sideline. How about Malzahn's little deer stand down there? It's like interesting, it. isn't it? Get a good vantage point as a play caller. Gives straight ahead, pushing into plus territory and a first down. Antonio Greer credited with the stop of Mark Anthony Richards. That's a gain of seven. The drive continues. And the Gus bus. Is that what we're calling that? That's not really a bus. Well, we're going back to his time at Auburn, everybody would. We hunt out of things like that back where I come from. <laughs> Western Nebraska. And Richards again bottled up quickly. Isaiah Bowser not expected to see the field today. The veteran running back and transfer from Northwestern. He's been banged up, and so Richards probably going to empty dose at number six. Yeah, I think you're right. Isaiah Bowser, the Northwestern transfer, more of the power back with a ton of experience and gave this Gus Melzon run game a, a completely different look but Johnny Richardson is an explosive dude when he carries a football Trillian Cole steps in at running back for UCF redshirt junior from right here in Orlando and a lot of Orlando natives in this one the crosser is there big play Robinson and Jay Flash they call him Jalen Robertson the transfer from Oklahoma the big gainer, the tackle by Christian Wilkinson. Check that Williams. It's a gain of 23. Yeah, and Jay Flash makes UCF's pass game completely different because of his skill set. Tempo for the Knights. Foles the carry and a crease. Big gainer on the right side. Six, maybe seven on first down. Bellamy the tackle. A ton of early, early rhythm for this Gus Malzahn offense. With, they call it the smash mouth power spread. 
You see a lot of offensive line movement in that power run game, and it's essential that Mikey Keene embraces the run game as well. But don't forget about the pass game with this stable of receivers that Gus Melzahn inherited from Josh Heupel. And a timeout call by the Bulls. Take your first yard time out of the half. That's called a let's take take a timeout to catch our breath from South Florida. This is a 30-second timeout. Well, Jeff Scott handing off the play-calling duties on defense, Daniel DePrado and also Ernie Sims. So it's going to be different this week. And Gus Malzahn, head coach of the Knights, injury's been well-documented on his coaching staff. Now we go back to the win against Tulane a couple of weeks ago. And we saw Quadric Bullard plow into him, clipped him, fractured his tibia. And hobbled off, Lauren. What do you know? Hey, guys, you've been talking about this perch that Gus Maldon is coaching from, and this is something that is very new and challenging for him as someone that has never coached a day in the press box in his entire coaching career. He said it's tough. He can't look the players in the eyes. He can't talk to the officials directly, but he's handling it like a champ. He's in great spirits, and hopefully he'll be out of the, the brace and off the crutches in the next three weeks. But for now, he's getting through it, and, you know, he's got plenty of bubble gum down here on the table to get him through this football game. And perhaps a stress reliever. Third and four coming up. Let's see what he dials up as the pass went incomplete. <laughs> Is that what we're calling bubblegum now, a stress reliever? To Brandon Johnson. You were telling me when we saw that pile of bubblegum that your, your choice of stress relievers, if you were in that position, would be completely different. Indeed it would. Amari Johnson in motion and a handoff to Johnson is stopped at the line. So decision time for Coach Malzahn on fourth down. Good penetration by South Florida up front. And that's where we see more of that three-man line. And then you have guys that are slicing and dicing from that second level. And that's what Jeff Scott told us. Much more three-down linemen or three-man surfaces on the line of scrimmage than Glenn Spencer played in the past. Daniel Barsky checks in. 35-yard effort almost oh, straight away. 4-7 this season. He hasn't been utilized too much. Plenty of leg strength. And he missed it. Wide left. And a win for South Florida on the game's opening possession. New defensive coordinators. They're sharing play calling duties. And they'll force a missed field goal on fourth down from 35 yards out. Jeff Scott obviously loves it in his second season in Tampa. We are underway with a war on I-4. Hi, thanks for joining the Pain Motors quarterly earnings call. And now I'll turn you over to our new CEO. The numbers last quarter were rough. Mia culpa. <laughs> well, not Mia culpa, actually. Vea culpa. Let's sell the crap out of this car. It looks like the car was assembled by a spider on LSD, who also had bad taste. It, it, it tested well. American Auto premieres January 4th on NBC, and watch two episodes now on Peacock. Back in Orlando, this is the American Conference on ESPN. The bounce house is rocking, and the first possession for South Florida and freshman quarterback Timmy McLean. Start number nine in play action on the first play from scrimmage, Omar Dollison. Taps out near the 30, a nice gain on first down, the tackle by Hodges. And Philly, this is all about Timmy McLean at this point in time. I think South Florida certainly feels they found their quarterback of the future. Head coach Jeff Scott and offensive play caller Charlie Weiss Jr. in spring. Football said, I think we might have found our guy. Dollison in motion, the handoff straight ahead. Bethune, the tackle right at the line against Jaron Mangum. Transfer from Colorado, and I think he was stopped just short. Tempo. And keeping it is McLean near side. And he'll have more than enough for the first down, and that's what we'll see a lot of today. That's what Jeff Scott wants to see a lot of. 
Yeah, and UCF defensively, on the other hand, Philly, have to try to keep Timmy McLean in front of them, and that's obviously easier said than done, as you can see right here. A lot of impromptu plays, a lot of plays they call them the second play, outside of the original design. This young man is absolutely electric. So third and short, he races for seven. McLean floats it deep, has Weaver, and incomplete. What awkward jump. His double coverage arrived late. That was Buller that got over there. He was open for a moment. Yeah, it was two high safeties with man-to-man -man coverage underneath. And this ball just floated a little bit. I think with that safety coming off the hash, McLean just simply has to drive this football in the fade window, and they might have had a chance. The receiver tried to get back through that safety coming off the hash, but was unable to catch the football. Joiner in the backfield, play action, and behind Weaver, it's quickly third down and 10. And Roy, those are the kind of fundamental footwork things that they're still working on with Timmy McLean. That's a run pass option. You have inside zone to the running back. If that edge defender, the linebacker to that side, steps up, you throw the slant in behind it, but the footwork didn't allow the slant to be thrown accurately. Well, he thought he was down for a minute. Instead, sails it out of bounds. And the pressure coming from Devontae Brown right off the edge from his quarterback position. But the bottom line is, even though he was outside the pocket, his ball did not travel past the line of scrimmage. And so this should be intentional grounding. And it will be. Intentional grounding. Offense number nine. Quarterback got outside the tackle box, however, the ball did not reach the line of scrimmage. The penalty is loss of down at the spot of the foul. It is fourth down. So, it's really another one of those areas young quarterbacks need to grow into the situational awareness and throwing the ball away, but throw it away past the line of scrimmage and you save your team some valuable yardage as now your punter is backed up. Mokial Atalamala. Back deep to receive this punt from Andrew Stokes. So UCF right down the field in its first possession, missing a field goal from 35 wide left. USF, Bulls pick up one first down, and that's it. And a late hop in favor of South Florida will pin it at the 37. Five minutes in, here in Orlando. Still scoreless. Hi, thanks for joining the Pay Motors quarterly earnings call. And now I'll turn you over to our new CEO. The numbers last quarter were rough. Mia culpa. Well, not Mia culpa, actually. They a culpa. Let's sell the crap out of this car. It looks like the car was assembled by a spider on LSD who also had bad taste. It, it, it tested well. American Auto premieres January 4th on NBC and watch two episodes now on Peacock. ESPN College Football is delivered by Papa John's. It's bacon mania at Papa John's with the new triple bacon pizza. Order today and in part by Duluth Trading Company. Clothing and gear designed and tested to do. Well, a great time of year for the Bulls and the Knights celebrating Thanksgiving with dinner yesterday. Of course, these two programs separated by just about 125 miles. Two hours on the interstate. They call it the war on I-4. And Jeff Scott, Gus Malzahn, they know each other well based off a mutual friendship with Chad Morris, former Gus Malzahn assistant. And also offensive play caller at Clemson when Jeff Scott was there. Just the 13th all-time meeting. A bunch of these have been close. We will see what it looks like today. First touch for Johnny Richardson. And around the left side, he barrels his way for two. So, Philly, we're familiar with what Gus Malzahn has been doing ever since he entered this game back in the Arkansas high school ranks. And it's a smash-mouth zone, up-tempo, no-huddle. He literally wrote a book on that. 
and you're going to see a lot of bells and whistles before the snap, but the intention is to run it first and then take your shots vertically when you get a chance. Richardson into the backfield. He'll get the call off the right side and with all kinds of running room, plus territory. Power finish, stop to the 45 by Evans. UCF on the move again. And Johnny Richardson is a speed guy, but the one thing Gus Malzahn told us, that he was a much better inside zone runner than Gus anticipated. After a gain of 15, quick toss. Mokia Atalamala shoved out of bounds inside the 30 by Vincent Davis. Give him 17 more. A lot of big play guys in this offense, but some of them are young, including Mikey, pulling the trigger at this point in time. The run game has gotten better recently because the quarterback, Mikey, has gotten a better feel of what he has to insert into Gus Malzahn's approach. And Mikey Keene, freshman out of Chandler, Arizona. He's on campus a month before Gus Malzahn and his staff arrived. Here's Richardson straight ahead. And it's interesting because he went off last week. Granted, it was just UConn, but on the ground, he had a long touchdown, and Gus Malzahn told us this week, that's the play we've been waiting for all season long from our freshman signal caller and Mikey Keene. And we'll see maybe if some inside zone, outside zone plays like that reach the end zone again. No, no question. And that's when Gus Malzahn got a little animated talking about that exact run play out of his young quarterback, Mikey Keene. He's a little tight to the vest, but certainly love to talk about that play. And an offensive tackle out wide. A little trickeration. Wide open and incomplete. Holler got decked inside the 10. Mikai LaPointe laid the lumber to prevent the completion at first and goal. And that tight end was in that fade zone that I talked about. And Mikey Keene can throw this ball a little more firmly, but that's the safety coming off the hash that is meant to do just that. The point does exactly what he should. I would not be surprised if the replay booth looks at this as a potential targeting. Previous play is under further review for targeting. Thomas Considine, our replay official, halfway through our first quarter. And plenty to unpack here on one of the more controversial calls in all of college football the last couple of seasons. And the two different varieties, leading with the helmet, and then just forcible contact on a defenseless receiver, which this would be. So it's a defenseless player, a receiver catching the football fits that description, and then it's a launch or an indicator of some kind, which I think you have there, and then it's forcible contact above the shoulders and the head and neck. That's what I would ask you in that sequence. Did we definitively see that in that area? The one question I have is, was there an indicator? I didn't see LaPointe really crouch and launch or anything like that, but there definitely was contact. Whether it was forcible or not would be the other question, above the shoulders and the head and neck. But Makai LaPointe, does a great job out of that split safety coverage on the back end and defending plays just like this covers a lot of ground. Well, a huge call in this game for obvious reasons. LaPointe, the starter at free safety. South Florida without the services of Matthew Hill. It's starting strong safety. And you've replaced your defensive play caller going back to the game last week in the loss against Tulane. You lose another guy in your secondary. It's a big deal. Yeah, and Jeff Scott told us that he would not be surprised if Gus Malzahn looks at the secondary and targets them early vertically. After further review, there is no foul for targeting on the play. And Philian, I think you said it best. I think it was somewhat benign in whether there was a launch. Third down. And was there actual forcible contact above the shoulders and the head and neck? It's just not contact. It's forcible, and I think it was questionable on both of those levels. It's not an issue of intent, but the way that it finished looked less hostile, I think, than what we originally thought. After all that, third down and nine. Keen, pressure, screen, Richardson. All kinds of real estate, and there he goes. Richardson stopped at the five. It'll be first down and goal for the Knights. Fantastic play call of regulating the pressure that Gus Malzahn was anticipating. Johnny Richardson, the running back, comes kind of behind the line of scrimmage underneath the formation and is the outlet 
for Mikey Keene on that pressure in his face. From the five, Richardson in the backfield. Richards gets it straight ahead. And upended at the three by Dwayne Boyles. This is the area of the field, Philly, that Gus Malzahn loves to have a closer that's his trigger puller in Mikey Keene in this sense. Being able to close out with the quarterback keeping the football. Second possession for the Knights and head coach Gus Malzahn, second and goal from the four. Peter Navarro checks in at quarterback. 14 in black. He'll try the right side. Navarro towards the goal line for the UCF touchdown. Mikey Keene. No. Parker Navarro. Yes. And the result is Gus Melzahn's quarterback is the closer. Navarro came in. There will be a time when Mikey Keene can do this himself, but now it's Navarro on that power play. Pull two from the left, two offensive linemen. They lead to the right. Navarro gets in behind him and then creates a little bit of his own space there to close out in the end zone. Well, he scored his first rushing touchdown against SMU. He comes back in the war on I-4. And UCF strikes first. The redshirt freshman out of Tempe, Arizona, Parker Navarro, with the honors to get things cranked up on this Black Friday. Well, it all got started with Johnny Richardson on third down and long. The screen reached the five. And then Gus Malzahn digging into his bag of tricks and rings in Parker Navarro for the touchdown, his third of the season. And UCF on the board. Thanks for joining the Pain Motors quarterly earnings call. And now I'll turn you over to our new CEO. The numbers last quarter were rough. Mia culpa. <laughs> well, not Mia culpa, actually. Vea culpa. Let's sell the crap out of this car. It looks like the car was assembled by a spider on LSD who also had bad taste. It, it, it tested well. American Auto premieres January 4th on NBC. And watch two episodes now on Peacock. Well, just as we all anticipated, Parker Navarro scores the first touchdown of the afternoon. Back at the bounce house, Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott, and Lauren Sisler. More than halfway through our first quarter, the war on I-4. And South Florida set to get the football back. And from two yards deep, tripped up, goes Petit, one of the top kick return men in the country. And South Florida will get it. At their 27. So Timmy McLean and the homecoming to Orlando. You know, he brought his high school teammate at Seminole High School in Sanford, Florida. Jimmy Horn with him. And you got to love that. Two guys coming back to where they did so many great things, including state championship. Yeah, and if you're going to be a quarterback that wants to make a name for yourself at the next level, why not bring your own go-to wide receiver and big play guy? I think that's pretty good thinking by those youngsters. And from right here in UCF's backyard, an important possession now for the Bulls. They're heavy underdogs today. They have played their best brand of football against the better teams on their schedule. Off the edge, McLean keeps it. Driven backwards and down he goes. A loss of two on the play. Jeremiah Jean-Baptiste got there. Jean-Baptiste did a great job of maintaining his discipline because remember, this is UCF's defensive game plan is to keep bodies in front you have the early pressure on him and then gene baptiste closes out the back door and that's exactly where timmy mcclain likes to escape on the back side of the intentional play on second and long mcclain Raymond Morris Brash had the pressure on the previous play on first down. He tracks down the freshman on second. Marion Dolison was on the fly sweep, so it was the zone run outside. 
And then it was potentially the quarterback keep by McLean up the middle. This is a misread. That was diagnosed from the get-go by UCF. And this ball should have been given up to Dolison going out wide. It's getting loud. Screen. Flag on the field. And Weaver brought down behind the line of scrimmage again. Gene Baptiste sniffed it out. We'll check the infraction. I think there's one official that didn't throw his flag on this play. Big Cat Bryant came crashing through quickly. The transfer out of Auburn. Team captain. That's one of the best names in the history of college yeah. football as well. Big Cat Bryant. There are two fouls on the play. Both are against the defense. Offside. Defense number one. That penalty is declined. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 11. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic. First half. So, Kelly, those are three consecutive plays that lost yards, and the end result is a first down. Yeah, and all penalties aren't created equally. It's when they come in What's the result of them? And Gene Baptiste was arriving with bad intentions, but he got the face mask instead. New life for the Bulls. 13th all-time meeting between these two. And a budding rivalry. Here's the screen. Hard hit. And staying alive. Tiptoeing down the sideline. Let's see where they mark him out. Right near midfield. And the initial indication, a gain of 14. And that poor tackling was the nemesis of this defense at times this year. The defensive coordinator, Travis Williams, told us the same. Jimmy Horn, the grab. And South Florida on the move just like that. Travis Williams, the defensive coordinator for UCF, had a great line. Told a story about flying your own plane, meaning... Play your own position, your own role, and make tackles when you get there. McClain, back shoulder, and it's there. First down, South Florida, track down at the 30. Xavier Weaver makes a big play for the Bulls, and a penalty marker is down. An eligible player downfield. Offense number 73. Five-yard penalty. First down. Donovan Jennings, the guilty party, a sloppy start in this first yeah. quarter. And rivalry games have this kind of intrinsic emotion with both teams, and that's what you see sometimes is just sloppy play, a lot of flags early, and then we hope it gets cleaned up. First and 15. Pressure, A gap, McLean. Back shoulder again, and it's incomplete. Looking for Dollison, it was broken up by Corey Thornton. The underthrown fade route was thrown impeccably well by Timmy McClain, but watch how Corey Thornton breaks up the pocket right at the end. Don't panic, just disrupt where the ball is coming. When you see the receiver's eyes light up, followed by the hands going up, Thornton breaks up the pocket. Well done. Sophomore out of Miami, Corey Thornton getting it done. Left side, there goes Petit. All kinds of speed back into UCF territory, and that'll create a third down and manageable. Yeah, and it's been a little dysfunctional, but at the end of the day, it's exactly what you said, third and manageable. South Florida doesn't want to live behind the sticks, and they've done that on this drive, but overcome that in a lot of different ways. After a gain of 12, third and short, their bruiser magna the big back end right now number zero Blaine rips it away crossing the 40 stopped short by about two yards Morris Brash and Barber prevented the first down and let's see what Jeff Scott wants to do here the quickest way between two points is a straight line Tim McLean has to start reading things and not playing with his emotions. I think he should have given that ball up to Mangum again on that play. On fourth 
down. Nice crowd, the box. One on one up top if McLean likes it on fourth and short. That's the 6 1 Xavier Weaver. McLean dumps it off. First down, Bulls. Well, the play action to the tight end, Mitchell Brinkman, gets it done. And really, Philly, that's the modern day triple option. You have the zone inside, potentially the quarterback, McLean, keeping it. And then instead of pitching it to someone, the ball goes outside to Brinkman, the tight end. That's modern day triple option football at its finest. South Florida drive continues under two to play in our first quarter in Orlando. When you talk, talk to the start of this drive about South Florida needing a response, South they're Florida. on the verge of doing just Thanks that. Seconds. George, so an interesting timeout after picking up the first down on fourth and short. And Jeff Scott in year number two in Tampa will talk things over with his guys. Of course, a longtime Clemson assistant, won a couple of championships. And we remind you, speaking of titles, coming up Saturday night, Bedlam returns Oklahoma and Oklahoma State in a top 10 clash from Stillwater, 7.30 Eastern on ABC and also the ESPN app, one app, one tap. Hey, Sooners have won the last six. Oklahoma State's already clinched a berth in the Big 12 championship game. There's going to be some drama. You got Coach oh, Gundy, no you got Lincoln Riley, you got all yeah. kinds of stuff happening. Yeah, no question. I've gotten a chance to break down Oklahoma State a little bit on tape. They're a tough out. The defense. Oh, the defense. The offense is playing well, too, but the defense is different than I've seen in the past. Vastly different and superior. Brinkman in motion out of the timeout on first down. And McLean wants it all. Comes short with a crosser. Bounces that pass in there to his shortstop, it looked like. As Weaver, or check that, Gregory could yeah, not corral it. And we're not playing baseball, Philly. Oh, that's, that's right. exactly right. And that's the full work that we've seen out of Timmy McClain. This ball is not a difficult ball to throw, but your feet have to be right. Good not to go to the post, but you see he doesn't step into it. Obviously, there's some pressure in your face, but you got to step into that and rip it over the top, and that would have been a big play. That was Big Cat crashing down. He's got a way of doing that to people. Outside run, Mangum with some real estate, and a stiff arm, and a first down. Stopped at the 25, and how about that run? The power guy, but nifty feet, and you know that he's going to stiff arm somebody along the way, but it's the quick feet in between point A and point B. Tempo for South Florida. Straight ahead, get Mangum. Leapfrogs a defender, stopped at the 10. Montalvo and Bryant finally getting there. Some 12, 13 yards down the field. Give him 15 on the scamper. First down and goal. Hand off again. Big man getting lathered up. Drug down at the five. I think keep it in the hands of the big man on this drive, right? Some of that stuff that we saw, I think you would call it nifty. Call it elusive if it's a younger or a, a smaller back, but it's 6'2, 221. Nifty is the word that comes to mind. I'm not calling him close it out. Yeah, he's too big. For You're me. elusive, I'm nifty. That's correct. Second and goal. McLean, the freshman, keeps it. McLean. With a pad to the end zone for the USF touchdown and South Florida on the board. Timmy McLean. Speaking of nifty. That was a good read by Timmy McLean. Chris Carter was the personal escort out there. Remember, that's the triple option. It's zone run inside. I don't like it. Do I have it to the edge? Yes, I do, because the guy that could potentially catch the football, Chris Carter turns around and block. Remember, Brinkman, the other tight end, caught that on four down. The exact same design. This time, Carter, that tight end, becomes the blocker. 72 yards in 12 plays, and the Bulls on the road. Tie this one up here at the end of the first quarter. Well, these two teams a year ago combined for 104 points. 
Over 1,200 yards, more fireworks on a Black Friday. Happy Thanksgiving. We're getting you ready for the weekend. Karen Mangum, the power finish. The star on that possession for the Bulls. And then Timmy McLean towards the pylon, reaching Pater. Thanks for joining the Pay Motors quarterly earnings call. And now I'll turn you over to our new CEO. The numbers last quarter were rough. Mia culpa. <laughs> well, not Mia culpa, actually. They a culpa. Let's sell the crap out of this car. It looks like the car was assembled by a spider on LSD who also had bad taste. It, it, it tested well. American Auto premieres January 4th on NBC. And watch two episodes now on Peacock. 15 minutes in, we're tied at seven here at the Bounce House. Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott, Lauren Sisler. Happy Thanksgiving on a Black Friday and a fun start of the war on I-4. Big afternoon and weekend of college football headed your way across the networks. And what a time to be alive here at the end of the season as we say happy Thanksgiving to Kevin Connors. Roy, happy Thanksgiving to you as well. Rocket Mortgage Studio update. Cincinnati first ever. Group of five to crack the top four. Jesse, they got a deal with Holt Nailers today. Doing a nice job taking what the defense is giving him. Under a little bit of duress, but checking the football down. Meanwhile, Cincinnati can't protect Desmond Ritter. He's already been sacked twice. Owen Daffer, the always thrilling field goal here, giving East Carolina a three-point lead. Bearcats on the move on ABC. Roy? Andre Ware, Jason Bonetta, the call of that one. And always interesting to see what happens to a playoff contender near the end of the year. The pressure really ratchets up a couple of notches. UCF football, Keene gets it back in the freshman. How about that pass floated incomplete? And O'Keefe would still be running if that pass was on target. Do you think uh, Cincinnati is secure in their fourth spot? I think all they have to do is win because I think there's going to be enough that happens around them That's, that guarantees that entry. So a complex answer. I'm really concerned because of the strength of schedule going forward. And you have guys, if Oklahoma State wins out, I'm not so sure that since he could maintain that, that position. Richards, a shoe string tackle and a loss of a yard. Vincent Davis makes it third down and long. Bearcats, you mentioned the strength of schedule. Isn't great, but they are undefeated in that win against Notre Dame. It's big. On the road. And the committee loves Notre Dame as well, so that's a great point. Which I don't understand, but okay. And the committee looking at the Golden Domers, and they still have a mathematic chance of getting into the playoff. They also need chaos. Third down and 11. pocket. Keen surveys and now late pressure flings that one incomplete. And Keen remains on the turf. Boyles was crashing down quickly. Keen in some pain. And South Florida doing a nice job of disguising. Are they bringing three? They drop an eight. They brought four that time. And if you can get pressure with four and cover was seven on the back end and more of a zone setup as opposed to Glenn Spencer was more of a man-to-man -man guy on the back end. Zone is making a difference right now for South Florida defensively. That was Kegler that snuck in there at the last second as well. So USF, new defensive play callers, forcing a three and out to tie this game at seven. And there goes Weaver. A little high step. Makes one defender miss and another stopped at the 34. Two late penalty markers fly in. We will check the infractions as we keep it right here. South Florida does have outstanding special teams this season. The return game has been electric. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, receiving team number four. 15-yard penalty, first down for South Florida. Timeout on the field. Oh, Dollison costs his team. South Florida gets it back after this. Hi, thanks 
for joining the Pain Motors quarterly earnings call. And now I'll turn you over to our new CEO. The numbers last quarter were rough. Mia culpa. <laughs> well, not Mia culpa, actually. They a culpa. Let's sell the crap out of this car. It looks like a car was assembled by a spider on LSD who also had bad taste. It, it, it tested well. American Auto premieres January 4th on NBC and watch two episodes now on Peacock. South Florida scoring on its last possession. This is the modern-day triple option. Yeah, Timmy McClain has the first read inside, inside zone run. If the defense crashes down, then it's, do I get to the edge in my own run, or do I have a tight end going to the flat? In this cr case, Chris Carter ends up turning into a lead blocker, which is the beauty of this. So it's the modern-day triple option. Zone inside, quarterback run outside, potential throw outside. Tight end becomes an escort of Timmy McLean into the end zone. Hand off, and being tripped up is Kelly Joyner crossing the 20. Respectable gain of three, almost four on first down. Bethune, the tackle. Hey, Philly, I thought Timmy McLean was a little juiced up in that first quarter. I don't think he was reading things well because I think he wanted to make plays himself. So as a young quarterback, you have to be reminded, get back to the basics. Stick to your keys, and he's made better decisions as of late. Returning to his hometown of Orlando, high toss, incomplete to Terry. And there was coverage underneath. Was that Big Cat sneaking Big backwards? Cat. Yeah. Big Cat snuck out like a quiet cat and almost got that big paw on that pass. And it certainly caught Timmy McClain by surprise. Big Cat is usually in the quarterback's face. This is a zone pressure, meaning that Big Cat Bryant drops into the flat unexpectedly, and the young quarterback McLean almost threw one right into his hands. How aggressive will Jeff Scott be on third down and seven with Big Cat lurking? McLean. Spins. McLean. Dangerous toss. He gets it to the sideline. He'll live to see the next possession. Three and out goes South Florida. The heavy pressure. Gene Baptiste, Selaskar. If South Florida is behind the sticks, they're going to be under pressure all game long. And this is a good example of it. And Big Cat ultimately was in there, but it was one of about four guys that was getting pressure on the young quarterback, Timmy McClain. Big Cat has, like, been everywhere on that drive, right? Dropping into coverage, doing all kinds of things. Tied at seven, Stokes back on the field for South Florida. I just like saying Big Cat. I mean, you stole the words right from my brain. I think everybody does, except if you're a fan of the Knights. And Stokes pauses on the punt, sends it end over end. It'll take a UCF hop. And whistle dead at the 45. So a punt of just 34. Great field position for the Knights when we return. joining the Pay Motors quarterly earnings call. And now I'll turn you over to our new CEO. The numbers last quarter were rough. Mia culpa. <laughs> well, not Mia culpa, actually. They a culpa. Let's sell the crap out of this car. It looks like the car was assembled by a spider on LSD who also had bad taste. It, it, it tested well. American Auto premieres January 4th on NBC and watch two episodes now on Peacock. Well, if you're a fan of the night, certainly you've seen the video footage by now. We take you back to September 17th, pick six. Louisville Cardinals find a way to hold on in UCF, 42 to 35. But on the final play of the night, Dylan Gabriel, of course, put up huge numbers in this UCF offense the last couple of years. Broke his left clavicle. Final play, you got the lateral situation. It wasn't great. We haven't seen him on the field since. And Dylan Gabriel banked up with that broken left shoulder. Returned to practice two weeks ago, was sick this week, but you, know, you just kind of wonder him on the sidelines, kind of providing a shot in the arm on the practice fields long term. What's the fit look like with him and Gus Malzahn's offense? Left hander can spin it at a high level. Richardson off and running. Richardson stays alive. Lasso from behind here, the 20. 34 yards on the play, and the Knights on the move just like that.
Start number nine for freshman quarterback Mikey Key. Starting to grasp the concepts of this smash mouth spread. USF allowed time to substitute. From the 21. Richardson probing. Richardson tried to get to the edge and he could not. Gain of a yard, the tackle by Davis. Great job by Vincent Davis supporting from his safety position. But what you said about Dylan Gabriel being a fit here is intriguing to me because he's a sensational quarterback. I think before he got hurt, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. I think the leading passer coming back in 2021. But does he fit this system? And if not, does he end up somewhere else at the beginning of next year? Certainly just speculation, but I think you need to stop and consider that. Keen under center. Richards motions out. And the screen to O'Keefe. He wants to throw it. Back to Keen. Triple team and down he goes. He's going to lose a couple. And South Florida sniffed that one out. Marez Bellamy with the tackle that time, Kelly. I like this play out more in the 50 where you have more room. But the throwback to the quarterback. And you also had Brandon Johnson going to the post. But great deal of discipline with a high safety staying home and this was really at the end of the day disaster avoided by that exotic play by Gus Malzahn loss of three Holler goes in motion on third down Crosser Robinson set down near the 30 and he'll lose four more, maybe five. Antonio Greer, the incredible stop in the open field. Grill recognized this early, the crossing route on third and long, just to try to come out the other side running and maybe at least get in a fourth and manageable situation. But great recognition by Greer from that linebacker position. Hold your ground in your zone drop, have your head on a swivel, and break on the crosser lane. Well done. So Obarski back on the field. Where Osteen actually checks in. Kick this one and it's no good. So UCF 0 for 2. The field goal department and another win for South Florida's defense. A South Florida defense that's somewhat under construction in the sense of new management. Jeff Scott told us we're going to try some new things. This is the second big win for South Florida this evening. The second missed field goal attempt by UCF. Let's take a look at today's perfect match studio update brought to you by cars.com. Back come Desmond Ritter and Leonard Taylor Acho and number four Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati had not been able to find offense all game long and finally they found it. Down 3 0. It's now a 7 3 game. Roy on ABC. Casey, thank you very much. Back at the bounce house, tied at 7 10 to play in our first half. Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott, and Lauren Sisler. Obarski did miss the field goal from 45 yards out on that last play. He's 0 for 2 today. Now 4 for 9 on the season. Perhaps that factors into this one. We get late in the game and remains close as Manga plows across the right side. Stop at the 33 by Cam Good. Second down and 4. Colorado transfer. Picked up nice yardage and a first down. The pass caught by Dollison. Into the 40 by Brown. And the tempo certainly is somewhat regulated by Timmy McLean. As Timmy McLean has gotten caught up with things this season, South Florida has been able to go faster. Quarterback draw. Straight ahead to the 45. He dives for it. And a six-yard gain. Bethune the stop. And certainly UCF is used to defending tempo offenses in practice with Gus Melzahn's approach, not to mention Josh Heupel, who now is in Tennessee. This group has been going fast for a long, long time here. You can see McLean's confidence start to grow by the minute. Tight end has it into UCF territory. And Brinkman 
picks up a first down down to Lawrence Sisler. Yeah, guys, and we talked about it earlier in the break. Jeff Scott walked over to his quarterback and told Timmy, I like the balance that we have with the run in the pass. Keep making those good decisions. Let's go out and keep making good plays and make sure everyone said he talked about the tempo because UCF's having some trouble with the tempo. So that confidence has certainly helped him to generate some of that tempo. Gene Baptiste darted past McLean and the face mask was grabbed in a hurry as McLean kind of spun around awkwardly for a minute. McLean does a great job of making guys miss. I didn't see Gene Baptiste actually get a hold of the helmet. He batted him on the forehead of the helmet, but I didn't think anything was actually grabbed a hold of. Let's see what our veteran officiating crew. And it's anything, Philly, inside the opening of the helmet. It could be an ear hole for that matter, but I, I'm not sure there was a, a Gus Melzon certainly agrees with me we'll see there are fouls by both teams during the play an eligible man downfield offense number 73 personal foul roughing the passer blow to the quarterback's head on the defense those fouls will offset it is first down i mean it was a light touch near the top of the face mask as the helmet kind of so it was a blow to the head yes. as a personal foul as opposed to a face mask call by grabbing an opening. So Gene Baptiste just went high on the quarterback, and you can't do that. And with an elusive guy like Timmy McClain, those defenders that are flying at full speed just kind of reach out and try to get a piece of anything. And Baptiste hammered him in the forehead. it all over again first and ten McLean keeps it and big cap Bryant got there stopped at midfield he's gonna lose five almost six on the play you tell me Roy Phil by you're reading big cap Bryant if he attacks me as a quarterback I have that mesh. I have to give the ball up. What is the correct read right here if you're McClain? Hand the football off. Absolutely. If in doubt, give the ball up. That's a rule of thumb. That's a bad read by the freshman quarterback, McClain. Another rule of thumb is Big Cat coming after you, give the ball up. You kind of put me on the spot there. I'm glad I answered that, that was question a correctly. Great answer by you. Mangum tried to get to the edge, and he is hit hard at the 48. Justin Hodges and Bethune, who's been active in this first half, combined to make the tackle, and it was hard. And Jeff Scott, I guarantee you, loves the position they're in in this game because his offense has been behind the sticks most of the time. Even on that scoring drive, they had to overcome some adversity to eventually get in the end zone, but here they are again at third and 13. What you don't want to do is have Timmy McClain put the ball in harm's way right here. Bulls one of four on third down. McClain plays the pocket. And McClain passes caught. Back in UCF territory by use of Terry. That's a gain of 10. And let's see what happens here with a fourth down and short. It's interesting because you're on the 37-yard line. And let's start with how McClain just milks this all the way to the edge. And I saw this on tape a ton. And then eventually Terry gets over there. But you're in no man's land with a punt. So it appears that South Florida is going to roll the dice. Converted on fourth and short earlier. Boy, and Mangum nearly committed a false start penalty. He was leaning over. And confusion, a timeout will be called by Jeff Scott. South Florida takes their third and final charge time out of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. Well, big games tonight. Big games this weekend. We talked about Bedlam Saturday night, 7.30 ABC. 
Got Oregon State and Oregon. The Ducks tumbling down the rankings after that loss last week. But, hey, clean old-fashioned hate in Atlanta tomorrow. There you go. That'll be a good yeah, one. And no, no doubt. I'm not ex exactly sure that Georgia Tech will be much more than a speed bump. But I really like that game at the at the bottom there. That is what Bedlam was designed to look like. And don't forget tonight, at the very top of that list, the Wolfpack and the Tar Heels, NC State has to win to keep its ACC championship hopes alive. The Pack wins tonight, Wake loses tomorrow, NC State goes to Charlotte in the ACC championship. Plenty to play for this weekend. Starting right here with the War on I-4. Fourth down. This has quarterback draw written all over it. McLean, all night to throw, has his man. First down, South Florida. Chris Carter with a grab. Seventh of the season, a gain of 12 on fourth and three. Dropped a lot of structure defensively, and Chris Carter does a nice job of simply finding that void. A good job by the young quarterback, McLean, staying in the pocket when he had protection. Handoff, Joyner, tripped up short of the 20. That's one of the things that Jeff Scott told us that Timmy McLean was working on. When to leave the pocket and when to hold in the pocket because he's so elusive. Out on the edge, he's electric, but you have to keep in the pocket when you get the protection to do so. It's been an interesting team this year in Tampa. This squad has played teams like Houston and Cincinnati perhaps as well as any other team in the American Conference this year. And then they get blown out a week ago against Tulane after a one-yard gain is quickly third down. But point is, best teams on their schedule, USF, South Florida Bulls have risen to the occasion. Yeah, and starting with North Carolina State in Florida, they didn't exactly give themselves time to get traction. But the short quarter blitz by Corey Thornton created an extra guy that Timmy McClain wasn't counting on reading in that quarterback zone read right there. And a timeout called by the Knights. UCF takes their first charge time out of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. Well, you just talked about the kind of the starts and stops by South Florida it really resembles the nature that is created in the offense when you have a freshman quarterback. His own personal ups and downs becomes the offensive idea at the time. So Knights call a timeout. McLean hobbling over towards the sideline to get this play call. Got Charlie Weiss Jr., the offensive coordinator. Jeff Scott and his ties at Clemson calling plays back in the day. See Bobby Bentley on your screen as well. Longtime high school head football coach in the state of South Carolina. He spent time with Gus Malzahn at Auburn as well. So these two staffs intertwine to say the least the 11th play of the drive coming up Kelly and what you have schematically is really a combination of where Charlie Weiss Jr. has been at Florida Atlantic the Alabama tie and then Clemson remember Charlie Weiss Jr. was with Lane Kiffin and so there's that Alabama DNA in this offense as well third down handoff and Petit dragged down Morris Brash Number 33 in black with another TFL. And fourth and long coming up. And South Florida is having a hard time protecting against the Ed pressure, whether it's Morris Brash in this case or Big Cat Bryant that we've seen before. Brash is, Morris Brash is going to come off the edge, and that offensive lineman polling, Donovan Jennings, was supposed to kick Morris Brash out, but that did not happen. Spencer Schrader on. 48-yard field goal attempt. 9-10 this season. And that one rockets wide left. We've seen three missed field goals in this game so far. Two by the Knights, one by South Florida. And we remain tied at seven. And this snap was high, and it seemed like the kicker's timing was just a little bit off. Spencer Schrader really had attacked it, but that high snap creates a little bit of uncertainty in Schrader's mind, I believe, and Gus Pelzon says, win for my side.
ESPN College Football delivered by Papa John's. Back here at the Bounce House. Tied at 7. Don't forget, ESPN Plus has more than 120 men's and women's American basketball games this year. Got the Knights taking on Oklahoma 2 o'clock tomorrow. That's Eastern. Then the Bulls hosting South Carolina State as well. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash AAC. After a short gain on first down, Knights get it back. Richards, the ball carrier. Isaiah Bowser not playing so far today, the senior. Transfer from Northwestern. He's been banged up for the seven win nights. The South Florida secondary has held up really well against UCF's pass game. O'Keefe out of the backfield to get the pump fake. And Keen sends that one out of bounds. Close South Florida defender. Vincent Davis was over there. Pressure by Mangum. What South Florida is doing defensively is just disguising things, a, a lot more personality. And I think that's somewhat what Jeff Scott wanted. You know, he let made a tough decision by letting Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Spencer, Spencer go earlier this week. And I think that variety is showing up. I, it's Mikey Keene is caught off guard multiple times today. Defense has yielded 45 points in each of their last three games, and UCF's going to be backed up five more yards here. Ball start. Offense number 77. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Paule costs his team five. And that's amazing when you think about it. You've given up 45 per your last three weeks. Yeah. And so far, you've only yielded seven. You had a team in... UCF that scored 34 a game. A lot of numbers. The translation, South Florida's been pretty good on defense so far. More movement. Defense jumped the line of scrimmage first. Let's see how they rule this one. Offside. Defense number 13. And the neutral zone, causing the offense to full start. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Jamel Logan. Yeah, Logan is number 13 at the bottom of your screen. It is kind of that game, one foot in, one foot out. Have you played that recently, Philly? Not in the last and two days. And the offensive lineman points and says, you shouldn't have done that. Back to third and nine. Keen pressure. Bay gap flings it out of bounds. And this Bulls defense really starting to flex a little bit on the road. And I'm not sure a lot of people saw this coming. I don't think we did, but Jeff Scott talked about more of a variety. Who Glenn Spencer wanted to be defensively was kind of like Iowa State, where you disguise at a lot of rush three, drop eight, but more man-to-man -man on the back end. But now we're seeing a disguise are we bringing pressure are we not and then it's a combination of man and war zone actually on the back end Osteen the punter gets it away weave your catch he was expecting a fair catch signal did not get it he spun down at the 24 after punt of 44. Back to the studio. Here's Kevin Connors. Hey, Roy, coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report, we'll check in on number four Cincinnati, that American championship game and a possible playoff invite down the road, but they got to get past East Carolina first. Plus, we'll set the table. Jesse Palmer, Sam Acho in studio to break down the game. Ohio State and Michigan, plus Texas in a tight one. All coming up when you join us for the Lexus Halftime Report. KC, we look forward to it. Back at the bounce house. Bulls get it back in a tie game. Mangum, the running back, and the freshman, Timmy McLean. Got freshman quarterbacks all over the field today. And Mangum barrels his way to the 34. Check that the 29 as we check in with Lauren. Yeah, guys, McLean has been dealing with a nagging ankle injury. He actually had to sit out the ECU game that was just a few weeks ago that I covered. And after that last drive, he limped off the field. He was over by the trainer's table there getting his right ankle taped up. But he seems to be okay right now, not limping too bad. It seems like we've had more injuries in college football this year. In previous seasons, we've seen that at a lot of stops. UCF has dealt with it. How do you explain that? Do you have a reason for it? 
I would guess on some level as Mangum's tripped up short of the line to gain, it'll be third and two. Maybe pandemic related on That's some level. That's what I was level. gonna say. In some form, we need to blame COVID for it because we blame everything else. But the dysfunction of a year ago, and I think the schedules of these athletes being disrupted, and for some reason, we've seen that in every stop we've made this year. Mangum probing. And I'm not sure he got there. Stopped about a yard short by Gene Baptiste. So approaching two to play in the first half, fourth down, and about a yard to go. Surely Jeff Scott in a tie game, not going to roll the dice? No, definitely not. He doesn't have any timeouts left. I thought Gus Belzon would have used a timeout right there to stop the clock. There's going to be about 35 or so precious seconds tick off the clock waiting for South Florida to punt this football away. Gus Malzahn from his office desk, fresh off the disabled list. That bubble gum right there is just being devoured. I think that's his second pile of bubble gum to the left if we can get a shot of that at some point in time. But a stress reliever, is that what you called it? It's one of perhaps several things you could diagnose. Stokes gets it away cleanly. And how about the fake? Nice habit. Mokia Atamalala tripped up at the 25. Well, they faked everybody out on that one. Johnson just fell down on the far side, and the ball actually came over there. That was fun. Ate Malala was actually the second return guy deep. The first guy to the opposite side of the field runs after the ball, which actually isn't going that direction. We've seen this happen before in college football, and Ate Malala does a really good job of decoying and getting back just in time. And this could have easily gone to the house. A return of 38 yards sets up the Knights with outstanding field position. O'Keefe in motion. And the handoff, Richard stopped at the 25. I don't know that I've ever seen that. Well, Greg Pike, our trusted producer, is telling us it happened in the Michigan State Nebraska game earlier this season but I've seen that a few times in the last few years where it's a decoy essentially is what it is and the primary punt returner has to really sell it Richards to the 21 the other thing Philly on that is you have to get the right punt because it's set up as a if this happens kind of situation and that's exactly what UCF took advantage of. I think this has been bad time UCF management by UCF. Second charge, out of the half. Remember, they had two timeouts prior timeout. to the South Florida punt. They didn't use it. 30 plus left. seconds went off the, the clock, and now they're down to 25 with only one timeout left. This week on Sunday NFL Countdown, Patriots rookie quarterback Mac Jones sits down to share his story of his journey to the National Football League. Plus, Sam, the guys ranked the top plays from this week's Turkey Bowls being played across the country, 10 a.m. Eastern Sunday on ESPN, also the ESPN app. You're a time management guy. What do you think about that? We'll talk about it here in a second. Left. Yeah. First, we'll tell you that Monday Night Football Week 12, Russell Wilson and the Seahawks against the Washington football team. 8 o'clock Eastern, ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app coverage starts with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. So third down coming up for the Knights. I didn't mean to interrupt your double promo. I'm just kind of miffed about this time management situation. Time management is not my strong suit. Really? Two timeouts left, and you let 30-plus seconds tick off the clock. Now you have 28 in one timeout. I think that's bad time management by UCF. Richardson in the backfield. Keane will roll the pocket out. And the flats is O'Keefe. That's a UCF first down. It'll be first and goal. Nifty-looking play call there. And again, a 12. The drive continues. And we haven't seen a lot of Ryan O'Keefe. That's a good use of him as the quarterback Mikey Keene gets outside and delivers an accurate pass. Remember, UCF doesn't have a lot of confidence in their Google kick game right now. 
Barsky 0 for 2 today. Missed from 35 and 45 yards, respectively. He'll keep in motion. Keane, play action, other side. Richardson spun down near the 6. And let's see if they call a timeout. They'll say the play was still alive and finally stopped inside the 6 by Greer. Well, let's just... Uh Take the situation where you believe in what I said. And you I do. Would have, you would have 32 seconds left right now, or actually about yeah. 42 seconds. Takes the third and final charge, time out of the half. And you probably kill it right there seconds. instead of using your last timeout with a questionable. Please reset the game clock to 13 seconds. One. We'll put a second back on the clock, and for Gus Malzahn, a chance to draw something up. Keen rolling the pocket. Do you like what you've seen there from the freshman quarterback today? I think that's where Mikey Keene is at his best, is when he's on the move. And South Florida has been able to get a little bit of pressure, so I would expect that Mikey Keene will be on the move somewhere. But a guy we haven't heard a lot about today was Jalen Robinson, who's their J Flash, their go to big play receiver. But O'Keefe, there play. hasn't been a lot in the basket, the quite runner. frankly. Well, I mean, it's been at the 12-yard line. Robinson and also Brandon Johnson, who's caught 10 touchdown passes this season. He's been held in check so far. Number three for UCF. Yeah, Let's see if Robinson. he becomes a factor. Yeah, you're right. Robinson's the touchdown maker and closes out well. Not a heavy use of tight ends in Gus Belzon's system. So I wouldn't expect that position to show up here. I want to talk time management one more time. Seriously, add 30 seconds to the clock. And what are we talking about? You have an eternity at the plus five. I, I, I'm just not exactly sure why we didn't conserve 30 plus seconds. Arm goes that. down there, and the clock should have been stopped basically at that point in time as UCF immediately called a timeout. They put one second back on the clock before. My expectation is after yeah. replay review, could be a couple of more if they sync it up with the clock in real time. And remember, down is anything except the hand and the foot. The elbow is certainly counted as down. After further review, the runner's right forearm just touches the ground at the 12-yard line. Please reset the game clock to 18 seconds. The ball be placed there at the timeout. And it's not at the 12. That's actually incorrect. They're going to move it back down closer to the 6. Correction. It's a 7-yard line. 18 on the game clock, please. So you gain 5 seconds and you lose essentially 2 yards. It's value there. Lose value. 18 seconds, no timeouts. But you're throwing probably into the end zone if you throw the football. And you probably get Mikey Keene outside the pocket in some form. UCF is going trips to the wide side of the field with a single receiver, a tight end they haven't thrown much to, to the right side. Richards in the backfield. Incomplete. It'll be third down and goal. The coverage was there. And just trying to high point this, basically go up and get a rebound, and Jeff Scott loves the way his defense played that one. Reserve tight end Charlie Browder, the intended target. Third down and goal. Trying to hit that 6-7 frame. And here's Keene. Front pylon. Caught for the touchdown. Brandon Johnson, we just mentioned his name. The transfer from Tennessee. And his 11th score of the season puts UCF back in front. Daquan Davis on the tight coverage. Brandon Johnson running essentially... A back shoulder throw to the pylon. This one was close as well, but every scoring play is 
reviewed by the replay booth, but this is a tremendous throw by a freshman quarterback. It has to be on time. Obviously, it has to be on target, and that's why Brandon Johnson is the touchdown maker because of good route running like that. That entire possession headline, Mokial Atalamala, the 38-yard punt return as Amari Johnson fell down. And UCF finding ways, creative ways, to get back on the scoreboard. And they're going to take another look at that touchdown grab by Johnson to make sure everything was in order. Previous play is under further review for a touchdown. So with the receiver in the end zone, as Brandon Johnson was, it's about where the ball is. And that pylon and end zone extended and all of those things come into play i think initially where that ball is received by johnson is a touchdown i can definitely see why the replay booth wanted to stop action and take a further look at it right there that's not exactly right on the goal line but i believe brandon johnson's in the end zone initially the call on the field very important here as well as you have to have the indisputable video evidence and in my opinion there's nothing there that would dispute what the original call indicated he had possession appeared as if the ball had crossed the goal line even though his momentum was going the opposite direction how about the throw by Mike McDean right there that is not an easy throw to make the, the timing has to be absolutely spot on after further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. I see why the replay booth stopped it, but I also see why there was confirmation on it. Lubarski on for the point after he's missed two field goals. Any ball sailing through the upright certainly wouldn't hurt his confidence. <laughs> Nor Gus Malzahn. Varsky, 49 to 50 for this game. The PATs, two for two in that department today. 14 to 7, 11 seconds remaining. A very entertaining first half. Now, Taco Bell welcomes you to the Limma Student Section of the Year Contest. Use hashtag Student Section Sauce to get the committee's attention and go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete here at the Bounce House. There's some bounce in the house tonight. We knew it was going to be loud, and so far it is not disappointed the war on I-4. Jeff Scott, South Florida, you have to like the position you're in going into half, correct? Yeah, I mean, you were a three-touchdown underdog, I believe, trailing by seven. Your offense has been okay, not great. The one time you give up a late score was off of the trick punt return. Keep an eye on Brian Petit here, one of the top return men in the country. UCF knows it to the up back. Sliding catch made by Brinkman near the 37. We should not expect any shenanigans out of South Florida right here, correct, Billy? I like it when you ask me the questions and correct, 100% <laughs> correct. It's one of the few that I knew the answer to right away without thinking about it. I mean, you actually challenged me on a zone read earlier. Zone read, and you got it absolutely spot on. I mean, I did. I'm I went time to management on you, and you got a little squirrely on me. Well, but you recovered well. We had a lot of stuff happening at that yeah, there point was in time. a whole lot happening. I still stand by my, my time management conversation almost exclusively to myself. It wasn't a conversation. It was a soapbox moment. That's true. Day after Thanksgiving, you jumped on 32 there. 32 seconds is precious in life. They still scored. That's true. Hand off straight ahead, which should be the final play. An entertaining first half. Mango picks up a couple. And the war on I-4 is not disappointing. South Florida on the road, hanging around. 14-7 to the score at the break. A little extracurricular conversations happening. Both teams off 
in a hurry. Gus Malzahn requiring a little assistance after fracturing his tibia a couple of weeks back. His team not in front by seven. Entertaining start in Orlando. 14 to seven as we send you now to the studio in the halftime report. How much time do we have? Yeah, welcome back to ESPN College Football, delivered by Papa John's. Halfway home, the war on I-4. Entertaining start in O-Town, 14-7, the home team. UCF leading arch rival, South Florida. Great to have you with us. Happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays, alongside of Kelly Stopper. I am Roy Colpott. Lauren Sisler joins us on the sideline in just one minute. And uh, look, defense kind of dominated a little bit. Freshman quarterbacks maybe trying to process some nerves in the first two quarters. There were two things I wanted to see. First of all, the freshman quarterbacks you talked about. Do they make the big mistakes? And they both played fairly cleanly in that first half. And then South Florida's defense under new management, what exactly would it look like? I think they actually gave Gus Melzahn and his offense fits in that first half played really, really well. Yeah, Bulls have given up 45 points per game in each of their last three contests. Gus Melzahn back to the drawing board from the perch. And away we go for our second half. Bulls set to receive the second half kickoff. Obarski back on the field. He missed a couple of field goals. We'll see if that becomes a factor. And South Florida will get it at their 25. Lauren spoke with both coaches moments ago. Lauren, what you got? Yeah, guys, we're getting, we're getting settled down here. I about got run over by Gus Malzahn's golf cart over here. You know, he's up uh -oh. on his perch. But, hey, talking to Jeff Scott, look, this season the mantra has been attitude of belief, and he's pleased with the way that first half performance went. Now they got to come out here and play well, especially on this opening drive. They're only down by seven right now. He said Timmy McLean, he's been playing well. He's been playing okay, but he said – they want to keep up the tempo, but get rid of some of those reads and run the football a little bit more. He said they've had some good second half play this season against Florida, against BYU. He wants to see more of that, and they've got nothing to lose. Go out here, have fun, play as hard as they can. Yeah, Mangum's average five yards per touch, and he'll pick up almost eight on first down here. Bethune, the wrong end of that collision. And hey, look, Jared Mangum, the Colorado transfer. One of these stories is you see Timmy McLean. Yeah, 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 yeah. The reason that they're going to call more give plays to Timmy McLean, he wanted to keep the ball. He was juiced in that first half and wasn't reading things well. But, I mean, you can call it in the huddle as I'm going to give you the football no matter what happens, right? Yeah, you can present it the same way as if it's a quarterback zone read, but you call it a give beforehand. And I absolutely agree with Jeff Scott. He needs to... Have Timmy McLean give the ball up intentionally early in the second half to get him kind of settled into the rhythm of the game a little bit. Third and one at the bounce house. Mangum. Needed to get to the 35. Justin Hodges met him there, and that's going to be just enough for the first wow. down. Yeah, that was close. But Mangum was the guy that, in that first half, seemed to have kind of a feel for this in the run game. So give the guy some touches. 61 yards already on 13 runs. I think you feed that guy in the second half almost five yards a pop. See his numbers. Kelly Joyner checks in in the backfield. Here out of South Lake High School near the Sunshine State. Play action, pass caught, and a big gainer into UCF territory. And that was Xavier Weaver. So Weaver makes another big play, give him 17. And if you want Timmy McClain to make a decision, the run pass option I think is better than giving him the option to keep the ball. You have a slant to Weaver or you have the zone inside. Swing pass, Dollison. Stopped at the line. Big Cat Bryant trying to chase him down. Charlie Weiss Jr., the play caller for South Florida, wants to go tempo at times also. And I think Tim and McLean looks really comfortable when they get into that kind of rhythm. But remember, to go fast, you've got to get first downs. And they didn't get nearly enough of them in that first half. Second and ten.
lane. A little stutter step in the backfield, and he makes something out of nothing. Stopped at the 40. It'll be third and short after an eight-yard pickup. This play was dead. Unless you have a guy that's as elusive as Timmy McClain. This was a non-starter until you make a guy miss. And that's what a good player at that position will do. He will block the unblocked man yourself. And Timmy McClain is getting really good at that. Bulls have won two games this year. One came at Temple. down. Mangum with a full head of steam. Needed two. He'll get two and a half. Bethune the tackle in Montalvo. Not before he picked up a first down. Window dressing to the right side. The, the wide side of the field. And it thins the defense out a little bit. And you're just going with Mangum right down Broadway. And I think that's a good design and you move the chains once again. And if you're Charlie Weiss Jr., play caller, head coach Jeff Scott, you, you just stick with that on this no current doubt. drive, right? No doubt about it. See if they do. Play action. Shows you what we know. Weaver a first down. A little shake and bake at the end. Stopped inside the 25. That's a chain mover again for South Florida. And it's the run pass option, though. So it's the best of, best of both worlds. It's Mangum inside on the power zone run, or it's your quarterback making a different read than the quarterback zone read. In the quarterback zone read game, McLean wanted to keep the ball. He was a little amped up in that first half, but the run pass option is more obvious than that. Mangum gets it inside Kip, plows his way inside the 20. A gain of six on first down. Roy Philpott, I'm going to get your own stand to call plays from because you're basically calling this drive as we speak. It's not that difficult. We make the game complicated by overthinking it sometimes as play callers. I'm going to get you a stand like Gus Malzahn on the other side of the field. <laughs> Jeff Scott may have something to say about that, but I appreciate the compliment. I'm going to back South Florida up five. Hard. Offense number 11. Bunker penalty. Second down. Yusuf Terry, you're like 9 million miles from the ball. Where are you going in a hurry? It's probably another run to Mangum inside, and you jump offside. Pre-snap penalties are the worst variety if you're trying to get a little rhythm. Usually when those guys out wide get jumpy, it's because it was a play-action pass, and he had to the ability to potentially get the football, but he instantly got taken off the field, and rightly so. I'm going to give him a free pass there. If he's throwing it to me and I think I can score, I'm going to get a little jump. Hey, you have to wait until the ball snap. That's the way the game's played. With your speed, you don't... You can be late and still be on time. <laughs> on second down, Mangum keeps the legs churning. Short gain, Keaton Hesser. Brought him down, third down. You know, Philly, what I would suggest you do in your run calls right now is you can mix it up with Kelly Joyner Jr. He's a complement to what Mangum is bringing. More explosive, he can run inside, but he can get violent to the outside as well. 11th play of the drive coming up. South Florida trails by a touchdown, but in field goal range. And Tim and McLean outside one direction or another and at least set up a fourth and manageable situation. showing pressure. Here they come. Delayed blitz. McLean releases incomplete. Well, a lot happening in that sequence. Coverage by Devontae Brown working against Xavier Weaver. That'll make it fourth down. Good throw. Weaver should have got this football. It's the slant outside. You have to beat coverage right there, and then the ball has to be on time. It's not always going to be your chest for crying out loud. Sometimes it's going to be off the frame, and wide receivers need to make catches like that. 41-yard effort coming from Spencer Schrader. We've seen three missed field goals tonight, including one by Schrader. Nine for 11 on the season. And from straight away. On the way. And the Bulls strike first in our third quarter. Under nine to play in our new score, 14 to 10. Reason for optimism for Jeff Scott. Hi, thanks 
for joining the Pain Motors quarterly earnings call. And now I'll turn you over to our new CEO. The numbers last quarter were rough. Mia culpa. <laughs> well, not Mia culpa, actually. Vea culpa. Let's sell the crap out of this car. It looks like the car was assembled by a spider on LSD who also had bad taste. It, it, it tested well. American Auto premieres January 4th on NBC and watch two episodes now on Peacock. World I-4 has not disappointed. Four-point advantage for the home team, UCF. Don't forget this season, along with their contributions to the university's general scholarship funds for every field goal and extra point made, Allstate will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you once again, Allstate. So after the field goal by Spencer Schrader, Knight set to get it back. Two yards deep, Mokial Atilamala. Crease stopped at the 29. Penalty marker is down as well. Let's check the call there. Keep on the return. Doing the return. Holding. Receiving team number 41. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, UCF. So poor starting field position for the Knights. ESPN Plus has more than 120 men's and women's American basketball games this season. A few of our featured matchups coming up include the Knights taking on Oklahoma at 2 o'clock Eastern tomorrow and the Bulls hosting South Carolina State at 7. If you're an AAC fan, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash AAC. Mikey Keene, freshman quarterback, back on the field. Maybe a little jumpy in those first two quarters. That's a good word for it. What I are you think, thinking here? I think jumpy. I think it's Gus Malzahn in the run game for sure. Richardson in the backfield. He's been productive, and his first touch stopped at the line. And no more as Bellamy made the tackles. We check in with Lauren. He used the term jumpy. Well, Gus Malzahn said he feels like his quarterback needs to settle down. He's a bit flustered, and that's what he wants to see here in the second half. He's getting a little bit flustered. They have to be better on third down, and their quarterback has to settle down. And you got to run the football better. Second flush. Third and nine coming up. You know why Central Florida has not ran the football well is because they have essentially no pass game whatsoever. I think the disguise that Jeff Scott has brought to the defensive side has mattered greatly. And Mikey Keene isn't seeing things well. And so if you're one-handed, even Gus Melzon's offense has trouble being consistent at running the football. Richards checks in at running back on third. You see the total yardage between the two. South Florida. Narrow advantage. More importantly, third and nine. Keene escapes. Keene has a man incomplete. Robinson was flashing open for a moment. And Keene not accurate with that toss. Three and out for UCF. And if Isaiah Cromarty from his safety position would have had the mind to not hunting the receiver, he potentially could have actually picked this ball off. It goes airmailing right there. Mikey Keene is a little jumpy. There's decent protection inside. You can't see the pressure you have to feel the pressure and I think Mikey Keene is seeing a little bit too much of that right now Weaver back deep to receive this punt for Osteen and the fair catch called for it made at the 43 momentum shifting on the road for South Florida stay tuned Thanks for joining the Pain Motors quarterly earnings call. And now I'll turn you over to our new CEO. The numbers last quarter were rough. Mia culpa. <laughs> well, not Mia culpa, actually. Vea culpa. Let's sell the crap out of this car. It looks like the car was assembled by a spider on LSD who also had bad taste. It, it, it tested well. American Auto premieres January 4th on NBC. And watch two episodes now on Peacock.
Well, happy holidays back in Orlando, 14 to 10. UCF out in front of South Florida. Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott, Lauren Sisler. It's time now for our Aflac trivia question. And uh, curious to see Aflac. what this one looks like. And here we go. Kelly Stopper, put on your smart hat. UCF 29 and 2 here since 2017. How many other FBS teams have a better home record? How many other teams? I can think of one for sure. You think in Alabama? I'm thinking Clemson. Clemson and Alabama. So that would be two. Yep. And I all I live in my smart hat, by the way. So I will think about this a second. We're not going to the answer right now, are we? No. Okay. You also live on your soapbox, it's, like we saw true. in the second quarter. Time management, man. Time management. Bulls get it back, toss out the flat, Springman, and a short gain. That's it, maybe a gain of one, Fuller the stop. So I like this adjustment out of Jeff Scott and Charlie Weiss Jr. Let your quarterback make decisions, but now it's run and pass as the two options, as opposed to run, I get to keep the ball, because that's where he was dropping it in the first half and not reading things well. Fake to Joyner. And an open look down the field. That's a first down. Grabbed by Jimmy Horn. And the Seminole High School connection coming up with big yards. Give him 24. How many times have these guys completed this route concept? Multiple times, no doubt about it. And I love Timmy McClain out on the edge. He reminds me of Michael Beck. And it's not just lefty. It's being twitchy. The difference is when McClain gets out on the edge, he looks to throw the football. Michael Vick looked to turn it into a running back. Horn had big-time scholarship offers late in the process. His joiners bottled up. And a short pickup, the tackle by Hester. So, Philly, is this a quarterback zone read, or is it a call give? The point is, we don't know. The defense doesn't know. But the result is, more times than not in the second half, Timmy McLean is giving the ball up to the running back, whether it's been Mangum or, in that case, Kelly Joyner. And I think that's a great adjustment by South Florida offensively. And I would hand it off to numeral zero here, and I think UCF is expecting the same play. And, of course, it's play action. McLean sees that one out of bounds. Big Cat Bryant applying the pressure. Down to Lauren. Hey guys, Jimmy Horn is McLean's guy. There's a lot of chemistry there, like you said, Cal. And in fact, Timmy helped recruit Jimmy to South Florida. They played football in Seminole High School together, as you said. They've been playing football together now. And now they're roommates. They share a tremendous relationship that is noticeable on the sidelines. They feed off of each other. And I think the future is bright for both of those young guys. Indeed it is, Lauren. Thank you. Third down and eight. Let's see if Jimmy Horn is targeted here. At the bottom of your screen. And the handoff. Mangum with a first down. Cashing the UCF defense and plunging out of bounds near the 10. You saw Yusuf Terry go in motion from left to right, and that's to change the eye discipline and really test the discipline of the defense and then it's simple zone run Turn to up. the left side all what along so when the defense expects you to pass it you change it up and run it and sometimes it pays dividends Mangum picks up 19 he's knocking on the front door of 100 yards on the ground tonight and USF South Florida Bulls on the move as Quadric Bullard is the injured night defender. Well, while we have a moment, let's answer our AFLAC trivia question. So we came up with at least two programs. You want to add one more? Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State. Aflac. Let's see. You're going with three. I'll go with two. And the answer is... UCF 29 and 2 at home. Four. Notre Dame oh. and Georgia. How about the dogs? Georgia, yeah. Number one ranked Georgia. They've been pretty salty. The classic city of salty, Athens. Yes, indeed. So basically we had one. We had two actually. We did all right. 
Tigers undefeated at home since 2016. Bama just that one loss to LSU. And uh, you look at the top programs, they have all been in the college football playoff hunt. Yeah. Well, when UCF gets into the Big 12 somewhere down the road and Gus Belzon likely will be coaching that squad, they might end up on that list sooner than later. Knights can pick up, or check out the Bulls can pick up a first down without scoring. And McLean, ball came out late. He was stopped at the five. He'll stay in South Florida. Jeremiah Jean Baptiste has Timmy McLean dead to right. Here, Philly, you tackle him. Watch this in space. Go inside. What were you trying to catch, young man? That's what he brings to the table, and that was a fumble. Chris Carter, tight end, made the recovery. Number 88 sneaking in there. And third and short coming up again. South Florida can pick up a first down without scoring inside the two. You would have to think Timmy McLean somewhere to keep the ball somewhere out on the edge, I would think. Jeff Scott... Charlie Weiss Jr., his young quarterback, wanted to hurry up so he can get in and out of the huddle. Jeff was talking with his father, Brad Scott. It would be best to burn a timeout right here. They're going to have to hurry this one off. Play clock winding down. McLean claps for it. Snap came out late, awkward from the get-go, and I think that they're, they're going to whistle this one dead. Got to use the timeout there. Ball start. Offense number 64. Off your penalty. Third down. Demetrius Harris, the left guard, and those offensive linemen are glancing up at the play clock. And so when it's nearing zero, they essentially get a head start, and it goes to zero. But remember what the officials do logistically. They're looking at the clock and then look down to the ball. So you actually have maybe an extra second than we see on the shot clock. Bad time management shows up again in this game. Third and seven. McLean retreats and is sacked back at the 20. Devon Wilson crashed through the line of scrimmage from his safety spot. Jeremiah Jean Baptiste getting things done as well as he has all night, but Wilson gets the sack and a loss of 12. And zero blitz, which simply means everybody that's not covering a receiver is coming after number nine, and they just get swallowed up. Jean Baptiste on one side and Wilson on the other, and they get to pay dirt. But hearken back to the play clock egregious mistake 36 yard field goal coming from Spencer Schrader he's one for two tonight and make it two for three and a one point game with 317 remaining in our third quarter a good one in the war on I-4 football playoff. Ready. Here at the Bounce House, you're watching the American Conference on ESPN. Great crowd, good energy, and a one-point game in the war on I-4. Homestanding Knights with the advantage, 317 to go in our third quarter. Kelly Stopper and Lauren Sisler, I'm Roy Philpott, USF, South Florida Bulls in the slime uniforms on this Friday night, the day after Thanksgiving. We remind you, very big weekend of college football tomorrow night. Saturday night football presented by Capital One. Bedlam returns in a top 10 showdown in Stillwater, Oklahoma State. And Oklahoma, and what a scene it will be. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC. The ESPN app as well. One app, one tap. Sooners have won the last six in a row. Oklahoma State in position, perhaps, to crash the college football playoff party. Perhaps. I think you're right. Are you buying Oklahoma? I haven't bought them all year. I think the it's Bulls gold. Yeah, yeah the Sooners. answer is no. No. I like the Cowboys in that matchup. 
UCF gets a football back. Mikey Kane, the freshman, start number nine. He's been shaky to start so far. And off the back foot, Richards shoved out of bounds short of the 30 by Dwayne Boyles. South Florida doing a tremendous job defensively. Remember the upheaval coming into this game. Glenn Spencer had been fired during the week, and Jeff Scott told us personally that I think Gus Melzahn will look at our secondary and go vertical early and often, and that simply hasn't manifested itself at all tonight. Bulls showing a three-man front on second down and seven. Off, brought down in the backfield. And the three yards just gain will be subtracted as Pinkney crashed the pocket. Pinkney, the big old man, is he rubbing that tummy? And I don't think it was because of the turkey he had yesterday. I think it was because of what he just ate. That was destroyed from the get go. South Florida trying to force the second consecutive three and out. Where's Ryan O'Keefe been, by the way? Mikey King, 10 of 20 through the air. He does have the one touchdown. And movement will be pointed out by the South Florida secondary, Christian Williams. Full start. Offense number one. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Yeah, Williams was pointing at Jalen Robinson to make sure the officials saw the false start. <laughs> and Williams was right. Jay Flash was getting an early start. No doubt the primary receiver right there. And it just simply can't happen. A little twitchy. Fourth penalty against the Knights. Third down and 14. Three-man pressure. Handoff Richards with real estate. Stopped at the 30. And five yards short of the line to gain another three and out after a nine-yard pickup. Mikhail LaPointe with a tackle. And the Bulls defensively, a totally wow. different unit tonight. No question. And that was a good use of rush three, drop, a bunch of clutter, eight guys in the secondary, and UCF rightly runs into that, but South Florida rallies and makes the tackle and forces a punt. That's beautiful defense. Knights a seven-win team this year. They're going to a bowl game, Gus Malzahn's first campaign couple of years removed from an undefeated season. Josh Heupel and Scott Frost, the former head coaches. New York Bulls on the road after a 39-yard punt. Kelly, they get the football back with a chance to gain the lead for the first time. And they had a chance to gain the lead the last time. Let me walk you through the shot clock in your windows down deep in the red zone. And I like the shot clock reference, by the way. The plus three, they got the penalty. And I don't put that on Demetrius Harris, who jumped, but I put it on the coaching staff for not calling a timeout with the freshman quarterback and the clock running down. So now they're plus eight, they get sacked, they're plus 19 and a half a kick a field goal. That's how you lose games like this, not win games like this. Here's McClain. Mangum has 90 yards on the ground. The fake in his direction, the screen to Terry get to the edge and a couple of yards not much more Justin Hodges Devon Wilson combined to bring him down and once again we see that adjustment that Jeff Scott told Lauren Sisler about it's now it's the quarterback reading things but it's a zone run inside or a pass somewhere else where I think Timmy McLean was getting into trouble in that first half whereas a quarterback zone reads and he wanted to create his own shot and he stopped reading things off nothing doing he'll lose a yard Josh Seliscar time winding down in our third quarter we got a one-point game and a rivalry contest on a Friday night in Orlando and Jeff Scott trying to pull off an upset on the road at the bounce house 15 to play what a save at the bounce house Hardware in the balance tonight at the bounce house. The war on I-4 trophy. When UCF going to the Big 12, hey, is this one of the last times we see this rivalry played at this venue? Hard to say. 15 minutes remaining. 
and a one-point game. Kelly Stoffer, Roy Philpott, Lauren Sisler. Last time South Florida won it five years ago. And a bunch of these contests have been close. 39 to start our fourth quarter. A little option play. And the pitch through the mitts of Joyner. He jumps on it. Back at the 26, Seliscar applying the pressure. The Bulls are going to have to punt it. And the Bulls had it. There's a speed option to the outside, and Timmy McLean is just going to option the end man on the line of scrimmage. And the pitch to quarterback distribution was not good. And so the pitch came to Joyner a little hot and a little high, and he couldn't quite handle it. But they had some running room out on the edge. Three and out force by the UCF defense. Amari Johnson back deep to receive this punt from Andrew Stokes. Turns it over beautifully. Near sideline. Sails out of bounds. Let's see where they spot it. So the Knights will get it at their 25 after a punt of 48. Big weekend this weekend, of course, with Bedlam. Critical game tonight, the ACC with NC State and Carolina. Pack still alive to win the Atlantic Division. You have Michigan State trying to bounce back. Mel Tucker signed a new deal. And clean old-fashioned hate deal. tomorrow, too. Good old-fashioned hate. Georgia, the best squad in college football has been their defense all season long. Lauren, what you got? Yeah, quick update on UCF wide receiver Brandon Johnson. Uh, last drive coming out of that second down, he grabbed his left hamstring, was in the injury tent for a significant amount of time. He did just come out, was kind of limping around a little bit, but put his helmet back on. He's back in the game. Keep in motion on the jet sweep. Stop short of the 30. Christian Williams, nice tackle. You can tell he is not 100%. He caught the touchdown from Keene to end the first half. And right now, that is the difference. Tennessee transfer. Here at UCF. And when you and I get a tweaked hammy, no one would notice. But when a thoroughbred gets a tweaked hammy, it's big news. Well, the passing attack, to your point earlier in this half, has been non existent. Yeah, no, no question. Surprisingly for the Knights. Continuous <laughs> lead to St. Release, so keep in motion again. And the handoff, plenty of green. Richards into plus territory, finally. A big play for the Knights offense. Williams drug him down. But not before Richards picked up almost 30. South Florida is rotating their safeties. And Vincent Davis is the safety that comes down and is supposed to make that tackle. When he misses, nobody else is out there on the edge. What is your play? And the bounce house does not like the fact that there's an injured player about the, the time that Gus Melzon wants to go up tempo but the field judge is down as well Christian Williams the injured bull player Jim Reap as well the field judge also fell down Thanks for joining the Pay Motors quarterly earnings call. And now I'll turn you over to our new CEO. The numbers last quarter were rough. Mia culpa. <laughs> well, not Mia culpa, actually. Vea culpa. Let's sell the crap out of this car. It looks like the car was assembled by a spider on LSD who also had bad taste. It, it, it tested well. American Auto premieres January 4th on NBC and watch two episodes now on Peacock. 14 to 13, our score moments ago. Jim Reef, our field judge, in obvious pain and requiring assistance near the UCF sideline. Certainly hope he's okay and he will hobble off, unable to finish this contest out. One point lead for the Knights here at home. 13 10 remaining after a big play by Richards and a one point advantage. Touchdowns today look like this. Parker Navarro got the scoring started. Redshirt freshman out of Tempe gave UCF an early advantage. Bulls would respond. McLean on the keeper tied us up at seven early in the first half. Brandon Johnson from three yards out from Mikey Keene. One of three touchdown. Richards gets it out of the timeout. He scampers ahead to the 41. So UCF on the ground here making a little headway.
five-yard gain. Richard started to pile up the yardage. Five yards per touch. Knights will slow it down. Brandon Johnson banged up. Back on the field. UCF needs it. And off. Richard's going to burst and another first down. Well, he's provided a spark on this possession. Yeah, and what Richards is doing is it's the inside zone that primarily has been the go-to for Gus Belzon and this offense. And now it's start inside, but bend it outside to where that slicing blocker coming from right to left shows up. And I think that's a slight adjustment to try to work the edges a little bit right now for UCF offensively. Auburn transfer scored the... Go ahead, touchdown versus East Carolina earlier this season. The roll keen out, throw the screen to Richardson on the back side, waiting for the convoy. Johnny Richardson stopped at the 30 on a play that looked like had bigger potential than it did, and Richardson not exactly healthy. No, he was holding, I believe it was his right ankle for Achilles area at the end of that play. And that screen was well developed, it was just poorly blocked, and South Florida did a really nice job of keeping leverage, or that was a potential big one for UCF. One point game, approaching 11 to play. Critical possession for both sides, second down and eight, Richards. All kinds of green in front of him, Richards! Tripped up at the 16 by Vincent Davis. Knights on the move, and Richards, the primary reason why, give him 15. Gus Malzahn told us that Mark Anthony Richards, you'll see a polar opening up the hole for the physical runner Richards, and Gus Malzahn said he's just trying, he's just starting to figure out how good he really is. He's a big back at 6'1", 215. Richards, sophomore, Wellington, Florida. First and 10. Touchdown, and it's still a one-possession game. The Knights kick the extra point. Keane. Pass is caught. And O'Keefe spun down near the 10. We haven't heard a lot from Ryan O'Keefe, but it was a two-man route to the left side, single receiver to the top. Essentially, Mikey Keene has to decide what he likes best. And in this case, it was O'Keefe sitting down in the void in that zone. Keene has completed his last four passes. Senate starting to go up. Confidence as well. Second and three. Keene's going to keep it. Wisely just gets down quickly. He's going to lose a couple. So third down upcoming now for UCF all of a sudden. And Antonio Greer did a great job of keeping contained and forcing Mikey Keene to step back inside. And you wonder if that was a design keep by the quarterback. But if not, it was a poor read by the youngster. Gus Malzahn calling plays from the perch with a fractured tibia. Third down and seven. After a loss of five, Coles... UCF running back. And a timeout call. Jeff Scott saw something he didn't like. South Florida takes their first charge sign out of the half. Timeout on the field. Now understanding the importance here, Bulls will talk things over. ESPN College Football is delivered by Papa John's. It's bacon mania at Papa John's with the new triple bacon pizza. Order today. And in part by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Here at the bounce house, a one-point game. Just over nine minutes remaining. Third and seven coming up. Gus Malzahn versus Jeff Scott in this great rivalry. The war on I-4. The two know each other. Very well, going back to Gus's days at Auburn, Jeff Scott at Clemson, and mutual friend Chad Morris. More importantly, the Knights on the move.
Richards, the running back. And he has been the feature performer on this possession. Keen in zone, pylon contact. No penalty marker. Robinson, the intended receiver. And it was to Marcus Simpson in coverage in that cornerback spot. Fourth down for the Knights. Simpson on great coverage, and Jay Flash was going to the corner, zero blitz. This is what you want, but I think this was just inadvertently getting tied up, and was that ball catchable anyway? I think that was the question, but I think better coverage than it was a throw. Element of the turf monster erupting there. Obarski, 0 for 2 in the field goal department tonight. This one from 32 yards out. Just 4 of 9 this season on the way. And a big kick in crunch time is converted. Knights extend their lead 17 to 13 in the war on I-4. Under nine to play, a four-point lead for UCF. Mikey Keene, the freshman quarterback, rides the elevator to the top floor. <laughs> Talk to Gus Malzahn after that last drive, Kelly. Yeah, that's a unique situation, no doubt. And Mikey Keene is 4 of 7 for 15 yards in this second half. they doing a decent job of managing things for Gus Malzahn. And some more of that gum. Bounce house is bouncing. Glad you could join this us. It's a good scene. It's a great scene. The cameras are literally moving up and down as this thing quite literally begins to bounce. Can you feel that? Or is that just me? Am I having a digestive problem or is this whole thing moving? college football. Petit, explosive player, tripped up. Short of the 30s, we check in with Kevin Connors. Yeah, and what breaking news in college football, the iron skillet rivalry got a lot more interesting. SMU coach Sonny Dykes headed to TCU to replace Gary Patterson. Dykes went 30 and 17 in four seasons with the Mustangs. Rhett Lashley going to take the SMU job. TCU needing to win to be bowl eligible. Ancho, Brees Hall spoiling their hopes. Yeah, he caught this one, but he also ran for one 24 straight games with a rushing touchdown NCAA record. 24-7 Cyclones, Roy. Gentlemen, I think we both like both of those moves. Yeah, no, no surprise on either front. That time of year, Jaron Mangum, the running back. Bulls trail it by four. Crowd is in it. the pile ever so slightly ahead crossing the 30 and Bethune the physical stop after a three yard game they feel like we talked about the fact that Timmy McLean hasn't been doing a lot of quarterback zone read most of it's been called give to Mangum it's time to start reading things again because UCF is catching up defensively McLean will read it this time heaves it passes caught first down South Florida and the far side goes Jimmy Horn, his second grab and a big play as that'll move the sticks. Devon Wilson, the safety, was out there in harm's way. But this is a really nice touch pass by Timmy McClain. A 16-yard gain. Tatum Bethune putting up a monster effort for the UCF defense as that pass sips incomplete. So Weaver, the intended target, second and ten. You're watching tape coming into this game. One of the things that I was most impressed with with Timmy McLean is the touch passes. Most everybody can rear back and throw it 100 miles an hour somewhere, but when you have to get it over the underneath defender and get it there before a safety can come and blow it up, that takes finesse. McLean pressure. Dumps it off to his tight end, and Brinkman tiptoes into plus territory. Gene Baptiste ushered him out. He picks up seven. The halfway point of our fourth quarter. Third down. 
Brinkman was the chip guy initially to stop that edge rush and then leaked out into the flat just in time for McLean to find him. Just four down territory, Billy. Feels like it. Feels like it. I agree with you. But you can't have negative yards on this play, to say the least. Mangum, not even close. He'll gain maybe a yard. Fourth down coming up. Tatum Bethune with tackle number 17. And I think this is where you have to put the zone read back into the lap of Timmy McClain. You've taken it away from him because he was a little amped up in that first half. It's time to give it back because if he pulls it when he gets the right read, there has definitely been some yardage out on the edge. This crowd is a factor. Fourth and two. Movement, confusion, penalty markers fly. Full start. Offense number five. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Jimmy Orn, the freshman receiver, cost his team an opportunity to go for it on fourth and short. There were about three guys that were jumping. I believe this was a late snap. When there's more than one guy that jumps, typically the center forgot the snap count. And we mentioned the noise level here at the bounce house. No question. Definitely could have been a factor right there. Mari Johnson back deep to receive. End over end and out of bounds. And let's see where they spot the football. Under six minutes to go. South Florida with two timeouts remaining. They'll blow it dead at the 24. Now, don't forget, next Sunday, the college football playoff selection show presented by AT&T 5G will have the exclusive reveal of the playoff matchups for the Cotton Bowl and the Orange Bowl. Recent company also unveiled the New Year's Six Bowl games and have the final top 25 rankings in a four-hour special. All starts at noon Eastern on ESPN, also the ESPN app. As we take a look at our Capital One college football rankings, as it sits right now, Kelly. I'm not buying Michigan in the five hole, but that will be proven tonight against Ohio State. Notre Dame and Oklahoma State lurking just beneath the surface. And Jim Harbaugh tomorrow has never beaten the Buckeyes. He's the head coach of the Maize and Blue. Game day will be there. What a scene that will be. Richards, the running back, trying to get to the edge. Cannot, will not drop to the 21. And a TFL by Daquan Evans. Vincent Davis does a fantastic job from his safety position. He comes up and takes on that power look where you have two pulling linemen. He holds the edge, and then it gets swallowed up from the inside out. Davis, Evans, Greer, and all their buddies. Approaching five to play. Bulls would love a three and out. UCF would like to eat some time off the clock. Screen to Richardson. Gets a block and tripped up at the line. Christian Williams made a huge play for South Florida. Yeah, if the running back gets by Christian Williams, this might be getting in the end zone about now. This was a well set up screen. Look at all of the UCF offensive linemen out there, but that's what you have to do, Christian Williams. You have to sell out and get anything you can with that right arm, and he, Williams does that. Knights need 14. They're 4 of 11 on third down tonight. Do you pressure the young quarterback or do you play structure on the back end? Five man front for the Bulls. They'll drop. Richardson with a three set up first down and a lot more. There he goes. Into South Florida territory on third and 14. He's tripped up by Vincent Davis. All the way at the South Florida 38. Give them 43 on the play. Well, South Florida was showing pressure. They were going to rally out of it. Only rush three. And 
you want to run into that hook, and especially if you have a back like Johnny Richardson that can make a little one into a big one really quickly. Seven carries for 95 yards for number 25 in black. That's a pretty good rate per touch, wouldn't you say? Return on investment is epic right there. Gus Malzahn said he's our speed back. I think we saw that there. Hand off, back to the line, and that's it. We talked about Isaiah Bowser, the Northwestern transfer, was the most experienced back, and probably the type of back that Gus Malzahn is more used to, more physical, kind of more well-rounded. But when Johnny Richardson got the feel of things, this offense started to take off again. What a game this has turned out to be. 104 points last year in Tampa. Totally different story. The new defensive play caller, callers for South Florida. Daniel DeFrado, Ernie Sims getting it done, but a big play for the Knights on the move. O'Keefe on the jet sweep. All right, so what's the mentality? Third down and long. The field goal makes it just a seven-point game, but you'd like to eat some more clock. What are you thinking if you're Gus Malzahn? Yeah, that's a good South Florida point, Florida. and I think they have a mobile out of the hat. Hat. So you give him an option of getting outside the pocket. If it's clean, take it. As we're hearing in the background, South Florida took one of their two remaining timeouts. But you also have a youngster making the decision once he gets out on the edge. That doesn't make me feel that comfortable. Gus Malzahn certainly going over all of that in his He's mind in the bounce house. Gum right now. Rip it. I mean, he must have an unlimited supply because there's still like seven or eight yeah. unchewed pieces. That's been replenished at least three times already. Yeah. Well, we're not done yet here on the gridiron. Don't forget college basketball later tonight, 10.30, right here on ESPN of the app. Continental Tire Challenge, fifth-ranked Duke. Number one, Gonzaga and Drew Timmy, live from Vegas. Ooh. They've met four times in their history. This is the fourth meeting, and what Blue you Devils got? What you got, have Billy? won three in a row. There is no question in my mind what goes down this evening. Drew Timmy, Drew Timmy, Drew, Drew Timmy, Timmy, and the Zags wow. find a way. Against Duke, nonetheless. Coach K. Swanson. Out of the sugar huddle, Richardson, the running back. On third down, play action, and King just has to fling it out of bounds. Ooh. The pressure was coming from Bellamy. Fourth down and eight. Now what? The organic stoppage of the clock. A good decision by Mikey King because nothing was there. Getting the quarterback outside the pocket, which we talked about, but the speed is on Mikey King quickly. You punt and play field position? What are we talking about here? One team on the field. Obarski, remember, is just one for three in field goals, and Gus not pleased with that sequence. I think that was just simply well defended by South Florida. Just three points scored by UCF in the second half. So far, that has been enough. Osteen's going to do his job. The whistle with dead outside the tent. Under three to play. Bulls get it back, trailing by four. Top of the hour here on ESPN, Sam Howell and that dynamic North Carolina offense looks to spoil NC State's run at an ACC championship game appearance. Great rivalry on the way after our own goes final in Orlando. Roy? KC, thank you very much. Back at the bounce house, we're bouncing. South Florida has the football trailing by four. Under three to play, a timeout to work with. 90 yards to the end zone. Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott, Lauren Sizzler. And a late snap. There's a lack of communication currently between Brad Cecil, the starting center, who's the best offensive lineman out front, and the young quarterback. It is noisy here, but it's not that noisy. Offside. Defense number one, unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty. First down. Big Cat was on the move a little bit early. 
And so conversely, a good decision by Grant Cecil to snap the football. The right guard gets off, or the right tackle gets off early. But Cat Bryant moved first. I don't exactly know that I saw it, to be honest with you. It's been a little jumpy here in Orlando. First and five, McLean, the freshman, Weaver. As a first down, driven down, crossing the 25 by Devontae Brown. So if you're South Florida, you have to move with a purpose. You have coming up on two and a half minutes left. You only have the one timeout, which is critical, and you typically don't want to use that until you're under a minute on this drive. After a gain of 10. Empty backfield for McLean. Pressure. McLean, and down he goes. Ricky Barber, the redshirt sophomore from Louisville. And precious seconds ticking off the clock with that sack. Ricky Barber is an undersized defensive tackle that creates a really quality pass rush inside matched up on a guard and or center. Second and 18. Third sack by the Knights. Flag on the field. Likely a free play for McLean. Escapes. Directing traffic. And heaves this one. It's going to be picked off. Intercepted by Devon Wilson. Keep in mind the penalty marker down inside the 20. And I do believe the Knights jumped off sides. Jeff Scott is explaining to his young quarterback, Timmy McClain. Offside, defense number one. Five yard penalty, second down. Big Cat Bryant getting jumpy again, but I could see Jeff Scott talking to Timmy McClain and pointing to the flag on the field as we're going to see the defensive end, Bryant, jump a little bit early. I'm assuming that Timmy McLean saw that, knew he had a free play, but Jeff Scott was making him aware. Did you see the flag on the ground? If not, that was a bad decision. Throw it up into the bleachers. New line for South Florida. And a timeout called by UCF. UCF takes their first charge time out of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. Well, it's rivalry weekend in college football, and Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One brings you Bedlam. Number 10 OU, 7th rank Oklahoma State, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. ABC on Saturday night, and of course, on the ESPN app, one app. One tap in a game that has playoff implications as we check in once again with Lauren Sisler. Guys, Timmy McLean is not known to be a very vocal guy, but I saw him come off that bench after that last drive. He looked at his guys and said, we are going to win this thing. We are good. Let's calm down. We are going to win this thing, I promise. And that is the most, uh, most I've seen come out of his mouth this entire football game. That dude is fire off, and there's a lot of belief on this sideline right now. He's got a lot of energy pent up. He's from the Orlando area, Seminole High School in Sanford, coming back home. A lot happening for the freshman. Does he have the guts to close it out in crunch time? Steps it. McLean incomplete. Holden Willis, who has two catches this season, the intended receiver. And Willis should have had his third catch because that was a tremendous play by Timmy McLean. Extending that play, getting out to the sideline, remaining as a passer and throwing a bowling. Third down. You don't have to get it all on this one. McLean. Nobody's hoping. How 
in the flats. First down, Bulls. Mangum into UCF territory. Wow. He rumbles across midfield for a gain of 30. The feet of McLean show up again. Mangum is actually blocking initially, and then he's an outlet receiver and happens to be going the same direction as his escaping quarterback. Fifth catch of the season. Crosser incomplete. Contact, no penalty marker. Weaver was open for a moment. Thornton was all over his backside. And that was a well-timed blitz right up the middle. I believe it was Bethune that had a free run at the quarterback, but that's free in theory only with Timmy McClain getting loose. He reminds me of a Michael Vick type, and I've said that before, but the elusiveness is absolutely staggering. Bulls haven't won this game since 2016. It's been a while. On the road, they have 47 yards to go and not much time. And a penalty marker flies in. And delay of game. Prior to the snap, delay, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Philly, there are so many things for Timmy McClain to keep track of here in this crunch time. He's never been here before, rivalry game, but it's the details of things. You have to know where the play clock is, and you have to keep your eye on that. One deep double coverage and caught! Xavier Weaver with the play of the game so far. 34 yards. UCF was bailing out to a deep cover three. Safety in the middle of the field. A seam route by Weaver. And if you throw this as a young quarterback, you better trust the guy you're throwing to. And he must trust Xavier Weaver indeed. come the Bulls in the red zone. Here's McClain. Pressure and down he goes at the 32. William Wells, freshman quarterback, breaking through the line of the Bulls. Kelly have to utilize their final timeout. No question in another situational mistake by Timmy McClain. Obviously, South UCF Florida. is going to bring pressure as you're driving yards, it. Out of the half. You just simply have to throw this, this football away, out. and that's the problem with the guy the that's clock. so dynamic with his feet. You don't know when to give up. Throw the football away about a second earlier and save the yardage. It's a loss of 14. That's the third tackle of this season for the true freshman Wells. None bigger, obviously. It was Wells, not Bethune, that was in there on that blitz the time before when McLean has had to escape the pocket. Out of timeouts, 28 seconds remaining. You gotta get it into the end zone. What's the thought process given you're at the 31 facing second and a really long ways to go? Well, the thought is you have to work the sidelines, or you have if you work the middle of the field way to stop the clock is simply to kill it. It's second down, so you have at least one down where you can do that. Even Gus Malzahn standing up. Knights think it's on for South Florida. Offside, defense number five, entered the neutral zone, causing the offense to full start. And Ricky Barber penalty. tells Second us down. otherwise, jumping the line. 
And Barber works inside at times, and this time he's out on the right defensive end, left of the offense, and just jumps early. Bulls need the seven-yard line to pick up a first down. to get it into the end zone and steal a win in the War on I-4 on the road, Kelly. Certainly Jeff Scott was dreaming of this coming into this one, telling his guys that you got to stay the course. Something good is going to happen to us. Nine seconds, seconds clock. Three, 11 seconds. 11 seconds on a game clock, please. And so now two seconds is going to be added. So you're right, Philly. You have probably, depending on how much time Timmy McLean may run around. You have three legitimate shots to the end zone. And a timeout called by the Knights, understanding the significance Which play? of this moment. Which play? We've already run a play. Oh boy, what a game this has turned out to be. These two rivals. UCF going into the Big 12, two seasons. South Florida trying to rebuild under a second-year head coach who's won three games so far. This by far would be the biggest for head coach Jeff Scott. And Gus Malzahn beside himself on the perch. He may need to reach for a little bit more of that gum, that stress reliever that you talked about. All right, so you got a freshman quarterback here. He's played well tonight, but in the magnitude of this moment, Coming back home, he's got to be careful, right? No, no question. If it's not clean, remember the spike cost you a down, but it was the right play. So now it's second down. You just can't run around all you want here with only 11 seconds. Follow the concept. Of the play. Game clock for 12 if it's seconds. not there, throw it away fairly clock, quickly and safely. Thank you. And then line up and draw another one up. There's going to be a lot of mess on the back end right now for UCF defensively and see if Timmy McLean can find an opening with his eyes. He'll roll the pocket, McLean looking, McLean intercepted! And he may have been down anyways and if so, the Bulls are in trouble. sequence unfolded and in the meantime Gus Melzahn is on the field at the 30 yard line with his crutches but if McLean was down officially there is enough time on the clock to still spike the football because the clock would have stopped when I looked up it was four seconds left Rolling on the field 
So the quarterback's knee was down at eight seconds on the game clock. That play is under further review. Talk about a break. If this no stands, much. this will give the Bulls at least one more chance after a quick spike and one toss to the end zone, perhaps. If the UCF defender wouldn't have been running around with a football. Remember, the knee down just simply means the pass doesn't count, the interception. But the clock would continue to run. And the youngster McLean would have to have the wherewithal to say, hey, guys, we need to hurry up and spike this ball, which you could do with that much time left. McLean clearly with the knee down at the nine-yard line. And there's there about nine seconds nine remaining. Seconds. And so that would have been third down. You line up and spike the ball. And you have one play, fourth and play. Goal. Winner take all, essentially. And in the meantime, Gus Malzahn needs to get out of harm's way. Malzahn still standing at the 26-yard line. He can't believe it. Bullard came up with the pick in that situation. That play counts. The game is over. Well, in the meantime, South Florida needs to get essentially on the line of scrimmage in their kill formation, which is Timmy McLean under center, which they've already done once. There was no penalty. There's no run at the clock. We saw the knee down with nine seconds. And so Timmy McLean needs to just make sure that he's essentially under the center as we speak. Thomas Considine, our replay official, seemed pretty much indisputable that the knee was down before the ball was released with about nine seconds remaining. And that was the original call on the field. What an ending just to get this weekend started in college football. Egg Bowl last night. You got North Carolina, NC State headed your way as soon as we're done here in Orlando. And here's the call. The ruling on the field has been concerned, confirmed. The quarterback's knee was down at eight seconds, and the play clock expired. The game clock expired during the play. The game is over. Wow. And the Knights survive. South Florida's offense lined up to spike the ball that's running around on an apparent interception that officially never happened. If his knee went down with eight seconds, you can get the kill formation off by then all day, every day. The war on I-4 lives up to the Philly. Eighth win of the season. Gus Malzahn and the Knights, and it comes in one of the more important games of the year as well. One more look. The knee down with nine seconds, but the bottom line is the clock keeps running, and the full interception really, I think, deprives South Florida with the ability to spike the ball. Bottom line is, that's a mistake by the young quarterback, Timmy McClain, to not throw the ball away initially. 17-13, to 13, our final score in Orlando, and we're just getting started on this holiday weekend. Nights over the Bulls for Kelly Stopper and Lauren Sisler. I'm Roy Philpott saying happy Thanksgiving and good night from Orlando. Coming up right now, North Carolina, number 20, NC State. To Carter Finley we go.